Well, this is embarrassing for Hollywood. It seems that movie audiences, and myself included, are tired of the WWE style Godzilla movies. Although I do enjoy them to some extent, the human characters within Legendary Zillaverse have no depth or anything to latch onto when it comes to caring about these characters. The human elements for me seem like filler that's added to these movies just so it can build up to Godzilla's final battles. Don't get me wrong though, visually these do look like the dog's bees, however, they don't make for great movies. The glitz and glamour of Hollywood blockbusters don't deliver for me when it comes to legendary pictures. Take a look at Kong and Godzilla, running side by side while Kong's wearing the Infinity Gauntlet. It looks goofy as fuck, even for a movie that has a giant lizard battling a giant gorilla. Godzilla Minus One outright embarrasses most Hollywood movies that have huge, big blockbuster budgets. It's an embarrassment because a lot of these films that I think are more like the Marvel films, you know, of today, where there's a lot of stuff with their own verse, you know, Spider Verse, and much more things like that. The you new, know, very Disney fied stuff that are running on huge franchises, but how I see them is this conveyor belt movies. They'll just put anything out with no quality. It's all, it's all quantity over quality. And that is a lot of films today. And this movie really is refreshing and stands out from the crowd. And it's very much needed in US cinema today. As it will remind viewers, they've been dumbed down by watching the Marvel films and the Star Wars franchises that are coming out left, right and center of what truly incredible filmmaking can be. Godzilla Minus One gives me exactly what I want. I want just a Godzilla movie. I don't want to see him fighting monsters because I'm sick to death of rerunning that nonsense on the big screen. In this one, we get Godzilla back. He is the daddy. He is Mr. He is Mr. Lava Lava. Mm. And he's back to wreak havoc on his own. He is the big bad mother effer of this movie. And that's what I wanted. And I know that a lot of you wanted too. I was previously worried about this film coming out because I really enjoyed Shin Godzilla. That was incredible. You know, got Godzilla back. He's a big bad of the film. Are we going to get a sequel to Shin Godzilla? And they announced that sadly it weren't. And I was really looking forward to Shin Godzilla Part 2 because I see Shin Godzilla at the time is one of my favourite Godzilla movies. Especially that I knew we were going to explore things like having smaller versions of Godzilla coming out of Godzilla's tail. I think Godzilla were going to have like, I don't know, but bleed all over everything inside. It were going to be dark and lead into the more horror aspect of the movies to eventually where they, I think they were going to make a third one where Godzilla just does not stop evolving until he evolves that much that he ends up in space as a cosmic force. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound insane, but you know, I was really curious about how that would have looked on film and maybe, I don't know, to this date, maybe they've already done it in comic book form because they do stuff like that these days, but I would have fucking loved to have seen that. I don't know if you guys would have, but if you did, let me know in the comments below. And ultimately, what I'm hoping Hollywood learns to do with this is, is write deep, meaningful, great stories that we all love, even people that wouldn't like something like Godzilla, can get invested in this film due to other aspects of the movie that's written really well and with powerful emotion in it. And also, with a lower budget so they're not wasting as much money. And which would be great for everybody, Hollywood and everyone, to be able to put more stuff for this, more more money into other part, into other movies. And we'll get better quality movies for that as well, instead of just throwing millions and millions into a film and saying, oh, make something shiny and sparkly. It doesn't work when it comes to intelligent viewing. As Godzilla Minus One doesn't have a message in it or an agenda forced into the movie in order to please whiny people that want representation. And I don't mean representation in, as in, you know, people that are transgender or need inclusion i'm all for that i mean these ones that want to force it down your throat or they will cancel it and hollywood does pamper to that crowd like a lot of japanese movies this simply has a great story there's no agenda to it they just want to tell a godzilla story without putting real life politics into the film which ruins it because you're just trying to show how it's like they've got an activist and like a lot of these american films it's like the higher activists to write movies and it doesn't work. As most of the general public, even that the people that they claim it's aimed for, don't like it and they just simply want to watch something meaningful or entertaining. And that's all people want out of their movies these days. I'm a thirsty boy though and I want any Godzilla movie to have a great story that will grab me by the short on Curly's all the way through the damn movie. 
then instructs Godzilla minus one with its church bell swinging back and forth between its legs while claiming who the real daddy is. And in all aspects of the film, has a better story filled with history and nods to Godzilla films that came before it. Did you ever think that you'd be holding back tears while watching a Godzilla movie? You know, me neither. I even found myself discussing this movie with some finely dressed gentleman outside of the theatre. That's the sheer power of incredible movie making, it forces fans to shed about it. It's a clear sign of good film. Godzilla does concentrate less on Daddy Z and more on the aftermath of World War II. This story brings three people together that each has their own struggles while needing each other to survive the aftermath of World War II. One, a so-called coward kamikaze pilot who says that his plane isn't working correctly to avoid death in the war. And a woman that wants nothing more than to find a light through the darkness of the devastation of World War II. She finds it in an orphan child whose family was just recently obliterated. Obliteration aside, they all come together to help each other recover and overcome the demons and even find love. Noriko and Koichi find comfort in the newly formed family of survivors and it's written incredibly well. I genuinely wanted both of them, to, or three of them, to get through the demons. However, their demon appears in the form of a radioactive monster named Godzilla. For me, Godzilla represents the demons that this newly formed family need to overcome in order to accept themselves in the new world. Koichi fucked up good and proper. His demon is Godzilla. When Koichi lands his plane on an island, he lies to the mechanics in order to avoid death. The mechanics do have a suspicion that is telling Porky Pies. Like Randy Orton out of nowhere, a smaller, younger Daddy Z turns up and wrecks everyone in sight. Koichi is told to kill Daddy Z as he's the only chap that knows how to use the guns on the plane. He hesitates and almost everyone dies. After that he lives his life in shame and carries the photos of the people that died that day as a constant reminder of his cowardice. Years later, old Big Daddy Big Balls returns, bigger and badder than ever. Ko Koichi needs to finish what happened years before in order to finally move on with his life. I'm not going to go on any further into this story and tell you what happens because that's only a small portion of it. Godzilla Minus One fills a void that's sorely missing in not just Godzilla movies, but most modern films today. It's surprisingly emotional and had me tearing up a number of times, which is very rare because I'm not that much, I'm not really an emotional person. And yes, you magnificent bastards, we get the OG Godzilla track too. Godzilla Minus One is a movie where Godzilla not only represents the chaos of World War II in the aftermath of it, it represents personal demons and sacrifices that you have to put yourself through to achieve happiness, not just for yourself though, but for your family and the world around you. Godzilla Minus One is my favourite film of 2023, probably my favourite film in not five or six years. You may even like Godzilla if you're not even a Godzilla fan. As the story is pure bacon, it's freaking tasty. Oh, tasty, lovely, lovely. Well, anyway, check it out if you haven't seen it. Thanks for stopping by, you lovely lot. Share and so for more content, you know, and do all that good stuff. It really does help the channel a lot. Anyways, join our damn cult. See you there.